Hey everyone, this is Jeff. Uh, it is about 5.30. Uh, just, uh, about, uh, yeah, it's right now, it's 5.30. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started on tonight's webinar. I think most people are um, have joined. A few people are just kind of now jumping on. So we'll just uh, kind of go through the preliminaries while people are um, <coughs> jumping on live. Tonight's webinar is on employees versus independent contractors and some of the issues that surround that. Um, so that is tonight's broadcast. Uh, <clears throat> and I am just now figuring out how to, there we go, move my, make sure you can see my screen. It looks like my screen is turned on. So you should be able to see uh, the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, today's pr presentation materials are copyrighted by my law office, so don't uh, reproduce them or send them around. Remember that they are always free. Um, they are recorded, and then they are available on my website 24 hours a day, seven days a week for free. So just go to the website and uh, catch up anytime on any of our webinars. Uh, thanks for attending today's webinar. We hope you find it interesting and informative. What you're about to learn is based on the opinions and experience of the presenters. We strive to provide you with the most up-to-date information <clears throat> and resources, but also hope you understand that every situation and every person presents different factors to consider before making a determination of the best way to proceed. This presentation is for informative purposes only and not meant for personal, financial, accounting, or legal advice and use from all risk and responsibility for the use of any information or ideas in this seminar. If you have any specific questions, just give the office a call and we're happy to go over your personal situation with you uh, and give you the uh, more specific advice. So that's our disclaimer. Uh, a little bit about me. This is uh, what we do every webinar. I've been an attorney since 1995. That is now 19 years, not 18, I think. Uh, created over 350 business entities. I think that's well over 500 business entities at this point. Uh, hundreds of clients in various industries. I've been a real estate investor for 13 years, a licensed real estate agent. I am a title and escrow officer and my office does do title and escrow work. Um, I am an entrepreneur, small business consultant, educator, uh, published author, blah, blah, blah. You know all about me. So that's me. Things our office does, it's information asset protection, corporate consulting, title and escrow, um, real estate and business transactional document, fiduciary services, live education, free webinars, and I should also add on there title and escrow work. Oh, it is on there, sorry. Boom. Oh, I should add, um, I meant estate planning. We do uh, quite a bit of estate planning um, as part of our asset protection packages, so we do do family trust, wills, power of attorney, healthcare directives, etc. So think of us for your estate planning needs as well. Okay, that is the preliminary stuff, and we will go ahead on uh, tonight's uh, con uh, content, um, employees versus independent contractors. And the first thing we're going to do is try and discuss and in detail the difference between who is an employee and who is truly an independent contractor. The greatest misconception out there is that if you pay someone on 1099, then they are an independent contractor and they're not your employee. That is a myth. That is not true. Um, it does not matter how you pay somebody, um, whether somebody is an independent or contractor or an employee, depends on a number of factors. Um, how you pay them is one thing that a court will look at. But it's actually probably the least important thing that the court will look at. I know I've listed that uh, top on the list, um, but a court uh, and the IRS, for that matter, does not care how you pay somebody. Um, so just kind of be aware of that. Don't think that because you pay someone a 1099 that they are automatically an independent contractor. Uh, so the more important things are the things below that. Um, but yes, typically a true independent contractor is paid on a 1099. Uh, and a true employee should, should be paid as a W-2. However, most of you probably are already um, aware of one big exception. It's, it's kind of a gray area though, but it is an exception. And that is real estate agents. Um, real estate agents uh, as agents cannot work on their own. Uh, because they're not brokers. So they must work for a real estate broker and they are technically employees of that broker who oversees all of their work because the broker is ultimately responsible for all the contracts that the agents uh, are dealing with. 
but uh, real estate agents are always paid 1099 on their commissions. So um, real estate agents do present a very unique situation in the law of whether or not they are employees versus independent contractors. Um, and as we go through this, maybe we'll use uh, real estate agents as an example because they are a good example to really understand these differences. Um, whereas some, some examples like a contractor, you know, a plumber, um, or someone who is your assistant that works 40 hours a week in your office and that's it and you pay W-2. I mean, those are kind of clear-cut examples, uh, but a real estate agent kind of falls in between. So, uh, other than how they are paid, W-2 versus 1099, next list thing on the list is an employee does not usually invoice their employer. Uh, if you ever worked at a company, you had a standard job where you were a W-2 wage earner, um, very often you, they don't invoice. They might keep track of hours, and list the hours if they're paid on an hourly basis, they don't send an invoice uh, like your uh, plumber will do. Your plumber will send you an invoice for her services, whereas an employee won't do that. Uh, so uh, example of a real estate agent, uh, the real estate agent does not provide an invoice to their broker. They just close the transaction and then they receive their 1099 commission or their cut of that commission. Uh, so again, a true employee invoices, uh, does not invoice their employer, employer and a true independent contractor does submit a, an invoice with the contractor's name and company name and address and how to make payment, etc. on a true kind of looking invoice. Employees are generally paid on a regular schedule, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, bi-monthly, quarterly, some, some sort of regular schedule. Uh, that is set up for that employee. Uh, a true independent contractor is usually paid at the termination of the service or sometimes in installments during the term of service. Um, and there is generally with independent contractors a term of service, uh, completion of project, three months, uh, or something like that where it's, it's a fixed time period in some way that they are providing the service to you and then they are paid at the termination of the service. Um, so those first three things, how, how they're paid, how they invoice, and when they are paid. Um, all three are kind of looked at by a court and all, you know, depending on, on which side of that line you fall, that will give you a clue as to whether these people are true employees or true independent contractors. Uh, moving down the list, uh, a, a true employee works with only one employer. Uh, and this is a big one. This is a big one the courts will look at. So if somebody works only for you, they could very well be considered an employee, even though they might be a plumber. So maybe you've got this plumber that's really, really good, and you try and use this person on all of your projects, uh, and so and you and you do a lot of work, and so they only end up working for you because you keep them booked, um, even though they may send you an invoice. They're paid at the end of their service. You pay them 1099. But because they only work for you, they could very well be considered under the law as an employee. True independent contractors work for many employers at the same time, right? Most plumbers will book jobs with lots of people. Um, and so you be, be aware, particularly with um, your contractors, you know, if they are working for others or if you're keeping them completely busy. And I know as real estate investors, and I'm the same way, when you find good contractors, you want them exclusive to you because they're good um, and they're, they're, they're valuable. Um, but if you keep them completely busy, then they could be considered an employee. Um, next one is autonomy in what they're doing. An employee generally has no autonomy in what work they perform for their boss. In other words, their boss tells them what to do. Um, tells them to shuffle these papers, sign these deals, uh, call these people, uh, send these emails. Pretty much they are their employees. They do what they're told by their boss. Um, and with a lot of direction and a lot of oversight. Uh, whereas a true independent contractor really decides who and what they do. They decide who they work for. They pick and choose. They may work for you because you always pay them and they choose not to work for somebody else because they don't get paid. 
So they have a lot of autonomy in the kind in what jobs they pick up. Um, the next one is control over the details in the job, and this is kind of like we were just talking about with autonomy. Um, the employee generally has very little or no control over the details of the job. Um, generally, they are uh, just doing what they're told uh, and filling out forms or providing a service at the direction of their boss. Uh, they're trained by their boss, usually, um, and so the boss really kind of dictates everything that they do. Whereas a true independent contractor uh, really controls the job. You hire a plumber, uh, you, you're hiring them for their expertise, their knowledge of plumbing. Uh, it's something you don't know anything about. Uh, you may not be able to uh, solder a pipe or replace a toilet. Um, and so you hire these, these independent contractors because they know how to control the job. They know what is involved and they make their own decisions on the best way to complete the job. Uh, an employee generally has a supervisor, some, a boss uh, or, or manager, somebody that is overseeing their work, approving their work, um, giving them work and making sure they show up on time, etc. Um, independent contractors, as you know, pretty much set their own schedule and, and after they book their job with you, pretty much have no supervisor. Um, now, when you're talking about general contractors um, and subs, very often a general contractor may be the employer of their subs. Um, again, just because the general contractor says I'm hiring this subcontractor, the same rules apply. Um, if that general takes a lot of control over the job, supervises the job, tells that sub what projects to take, and that, and, and that sub only works with that general, then it could very well be that that subcontractor becomes an employee of the general contractor. A um, couple other things, uh, an employee uses the employer's equipment. You know, they show up at their, at their desk, at their office, uh, they use their employer's computer, uh, their employer's phone at the desk, et cetera, their, phone, their employer's notepads and pens and paper and that sort of thing. Whereas an independent contractor usually buys all those things himself uh, and is responsible for sort of all of his own costs. An employee will work under a, an employment agreement and an independent contra contractor will work under an independent contractor agreement. So these agreements are really important. Um, so whenever I do a contract uh, for one of my clients, I ask them, what is this person doing? Is this an employee or is this an independent contractor? And these contracts are very different. They have different terms, different clauses, uh, different rights and responsibilities. Uh, and so it's very important that if you're trying to establish somebody as either an employee or as an independent contractor, that you use the right kind of agreement. Um, Employees are generally hired long term. They're sort of looked at as somebody who is going to be part of your business for a long period of time. And that's mostly because you are supervising them, you are training them, you are teaching them the position. And so you don't want them to just leave because you're investing in them uh, as opposed to an independent contractor is pretty much short term. They're hired for a particular job when the job is done, they're gone. <clears throat> uh, employees might often have a lesser level of skill and an independent contractor greater level of skill. Uh, but this certainly can vary. You can hire an employee who is highly, highly skilled. Uh, but that's just another thing that courts will look at. And the last thing, and the reason I have the exclamation points by this last, uh, the last line, is because these really are the most important things on this list. Uh, an employee will not have their own insurance. Uh, whereas an independent contractor will maintain their own liability insurance, their own bonds, uh, these sort of things. And when you're hiring somebody and, you, and you're hiring them as an independent contractor, you absolutely have the right to demand and ask for proof of their insurance. Um, because if they're covered by insurance, then uh, you know that they're probably a true independent contractor. And if anything does happen, they're covering their own insurance, their own, their own unemployment insurance, their own workers' comp, uh, et cetera. 
So that last one is really, 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 really important. Um, if they do carry their own insurance, you can be pretty much rest assured that they are independent contractors. If they don't, then you're going to have to go through kind of this long list and decide um, who, you know, is this person an employee of mine or can I really treat them as an independent contractor? So unfortunately, there's no single, like almost everything that I teach, and if you've taken any of my classes or listened to any of my webinars, you know, I wish I, I had very simple answers for you. But there's, you know, this is the law and things are arguable and, and um, you know, really depends on uh, a totality of evidence, uh, lots of factors that, you know, that a court would look at. Um, and not only a court, but state divisions and commissions. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So, um, with everyone that works for you, you should go through this in your head. Um, feel free to refer back to this list. Um, if I set up your LLC for you, you will have a set of documents at the back of that binder of information. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff about running an LLC, and this list is in that uh, set of that, that 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 set of documents. Uh, so you've got this with you, and you can always uh, go to the website and look at it there. So why is this important? Why is it important to determine whether somebody is an employee or an independent contractor? Um, oh, but before we get out, it's kind of just some, some more notes that I thought I'd throw in here. Um, again, no one criteria is enough to establish the independent contractor status. The court will examine everything and utilize a totality of evidence standard, just like with your corporate identity. It has already been determined that the that uh, the method of payment alone is not enough. And the final criterion is the truest test. That is a true independent contractor will have his or her own uh, unemployment and injury or disability insurance coverages. Uh, if this is the case, don't rely on the contractor's assurance or their word. Ask for the paperwork. Call the insurance company to make sure the policy is still in effect and that the contractor is actually covered. Um, uh, if the person is uh, if the person is an employee, you as the employee employer are required to carry that insurance, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about in just a second. Is that the nice thing about independent contractors is you're not liable for what they do, and you're not responsible for their insurance. But if that person is deemed an employee, then you're the employer, and you have to start providing these things for your employees. So, what things are there? Uh, tax forms. Um, with independent contractors, you must send out a 1099 to any independent contractor who bills you over $600 a year, although it's preferable to always send them regardless of the amount billed. Um, this is a requirement. You must do this uh, as an employer, even with your independent contractors. So anybody you paid out more than $600, you must send them a 1099 that you pay and, and the amount that you paid them. That does a couple of things. One, it provides evidence of your expense, that this was a, a true business expense and it's, it's a write-off from your business income. Uh, and it puts the burden on them to report that money on their tax return. So if they pay taxes on it, you do not. So always send your 1099s. You can do them yourselves. There are forms you can buy um, and you can do them yourselves or have your accountant do them. Obviously, with employees, you will send W-2s, um, and your payroll company or accountant can do those uh, as well. Accidents. Okay. Uh, if the person, the employer or independent contractor, uh, gets into an accident and is injured, or if they cause an accident and injure somebody else, uh, there is a theory in the law, uh, it's a theory of liability called respondeat superior. That is a Latin term that means your boss is responsible. It means you're, essentially it says your, your boss will step into your shoes and cover uh, the accidents that you cause. So if somebody is deemed an employee and they are, are driving a car and they're driving on the way to a job site and they get into an accident and hurt somebody, you as the employer can be liable for that accident if they were on a business errand. Uh, that, that analysis is a little bit more complicated and takes a little more time than we'll spend tonight. But if that person is deemed an employee and that person was working in the, in, within the scope of their duties of employment, then you as the, as the employer employer 
it, are liable for those damages. Uh, if your employee is injured on the job, uh, they slip and fall inside the office, or they are uh, working on a property and shoot a nail gun through their hand, then they will make an, uh, an insurance claim on workers' comp, and they will, I promise you, they will go to the state and they will file a claim in workers' comp, and if you haven't been paying into the workers' comp fund as the employer, you can get busted. And we'll talk about that in a minute. That's kind of the next step. But you are, at, if, if they're an employee, the employer is liable for accidents. If they are a true independent contractor, then you are not liable for their injuries or the accidents or damages that they cause. So you really want independent contractors. Problem is you may not have the independent contractors you think you have. Uh, workers' compensation, this goes right into it. Um, workers' compensation is an insurance program that covers the expenses of employees who are injured on the job. All states require this, uh, and almost all states require that the employers pay for this insurance. They cannot deduct it out of the employee's uh, paycheck. Uh, so if you have any employees whatsoever, you must obtain a workers' compensation insurance policy. Remember that paying someone a 1099 is not enough to prove that they are not an employee. The state will um, apply the, the same test a court will. And if the state determines that this is an employee, they will hold you liable for paying into the workers' comp fund. Um, and remember, like I said, and I've seen it twice so far in the last few months, that someone who was an employee uh, injured somehow on the job went and filed a claim uh, for workers' comp, uh, and in one case, in both case, well, in both cases they were true employees. In one case, there was the employer had been paying into the workers' comp fund. In the other case, the employer's uh, accounting, their their um, payroll company, uh, had stopped paying into the workers' comp fund. Um, they had switched payroll companies, and just things kind of got lost. And so the employer paid a fine and had to get caught up. Uh, on all of their stuff. So not a good thing to, to try and do. Now, workers comp is not required for the self-employed with no employees. So if you are, if you have your own business and most real estate investors have their own business, um, you are an employer and you are also the employee, uh, but you are not required to pay workers compensation for yourself. You must pay it, pay it for others who work for you, but if it's just you in the business and you have no employees, you do not have to pay into the workers' compensation fund. Uh, you must file a waiver and pay a $50 fee, uh, but that kind of gets you out of paying workers' comp altogether. Uh, so you can do that. Uh, also with workers' comp, this is actually right off uh, the workers' compensation website. These are the tests that they look at to determine whether or not someone is an employee. Uh, is this person independent of the, employer, of the employer in all that pertains to the execution of the work? Uh, they're not subject to the routine rule or control of the employer. They're engaged only in the performance of a definite job or piece of work. Uh, and they are uh, subordinate to the employer only in effecting a result in accordance with the employer's design. Those are a little bit more fancy ways of saying the same things that I said in our list earlier. So, um, like I said, states apply the same test, and if they determine that someone's your employee, they will require you to uh, pay into workers' compensation fund. The other thing you have to worry about is unemployment insurance. Uh, this is an insurance program that pays employees in the event that they are laid off from their jobs. Uh, states require that all employers Obtain this insurance cover for their employees. Again, you cannot deduct this insurance out of the employee's paycheck. Uh, so if you have any employees, you must pay into the unemployment insurance program. Uh, paying someone 29 is not enough to prove it. Uh, and then there is no waiver for the self-employed here. So believe it or not, if you're your own business and you have a company and you go out and work and you make money, even though you have no employees, you still must pay into the unemployment insurance fund. Uh, do not fear, it's not a lot. 
Um, it's based on your income, um, and it's really not a lot of money. It might even be less than a, a few hundred dollars a year. Um, the best way to do that is go through a payroll company, but you can also uh, call up the state and uh, ask them how much it would be for you to contribute into unemployment insurance. Um, now, who's going to find out if it's just you? Well, if you never <laughs> claim unemployment, then they will never know. But the nice thing is if you are somehow laid off and the self-employed trying to claim being laid off is kind of tough. I will admit that this is, I've had issues with the self-employed paying into this fund, but you know, until we can change the law, we have to follow the law. Um, and so if you can you may end up paying into this and never being able to actually take advantage of it. Uh, but, um, kind of depends on your job, but as a real estate investor, you, you may not. So anyways, that's unemployment insurance. It's another thing that depends on whether you are an independent contractor or an employee. Uh, payroll, uh, generally uh, employees, uh, employers use a payroll uh, for their W-2 employees. Any of you that have S-Corps, uh, I've always recommended that if you have an S-Corp, you are required to pay yourself a salary uh, and you should use a payroll company for that salary. Uh, it's a great and convenient way to, to get all of this done. It is not expensive. You don't have to pay yourself every week or every other week or even every month. You can pay yourself once a year, pay yourself quarterly, uh, every four months. Kind of, you, know, you can talk to payroll companies and uh, just find out their pricing for different options. Uh, my payroll company is super affordable. I love them. I seriously, I send an email and say, pay me this much. And then they automatically withdraw that out of my business account. They withhold my taxes and they send the taxes to the IRS and to the state. They take out of my business account the employer's contribution to those taxes. So that's all done. They pay into my unemployment insurance. So that's all done. Uh, then they automatically deposit my paycheck into my personal account uh, all on the same day. Uh, and literally all I did was spend three seconds to send an email uh, and it cost me 50 bucks. So seriously, um, I really highly recommend um, going through a payroll company. They can also uh, pay into workers' compensation funds and do other things for you as well if you have employees. Um, so definitely check that out. If you need some referrals for payroll companies, just send, send an email to the office and we will be happy to tell you about um, different payroll companies. Okay, uh, that is it, looks like. So, um, yeah, only about uh, 25 minutes. I knew this would be kind of a shorter uh, webinar uh, on employees versus independent contractors. Uh, we will open it up to questions. So if you have a question, uh, the easiest thing to do is to type it in either the chat box on your computer screen or into the questions screen on you know, if you're on a computer and not a phone. So. We'll give a few minutes. This is pretty self-explanatory. I don't think there'll be a lot of questions, but uh, if you do have a question, uh, please type it now and we will answer them. Uh, so far, no questions. Um, if you have any specific questions, again, you can always feel free to uh, email us at the office or give the office a call. Um, the office number is 801-560-2180, uh, um, and we're happy to do that for you and provide any other services you might need. So feel free to think of us, and uh, it looks like there's no more questions, so we're going to end uh, tonight's webinar. This will be available on our website uh, within the next uh, day or two, uh, so if you need to review this information or see this uh, PowerPoint slide again, uh, feel free to visit the website. Uh, other than that, have a great evening and a very happy 4th of July, uh, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.